See, that the reason he did all of it was so that he could be a mediator for us between us and God. He's a great high priest because there is no greater mediation between God and man than that that is provided by Christ. Only Christ knows the nature of God, the divine nature, and the nature of man. Only Christ can be our ultimate mediator to God. And so he is our great high priest. And notice what he says. Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or confession. So now uh, he's the apostle and high priest of our profession. And because he is our great high priest, because he has ascended into heaven to mediate between us and God by giving the, the mediation of his own blood to pay the price for our sins... We are exhorted to hold fast our confession of Christ. Our uh, profession that we live for Christ. And the Hebrews writer says, hold fast to that. Don't let it go. Don't let it go for anything. As uh, we'll see when we get over to chapter 12, don't let it go for anything, even if it means bloodshed. Don't let it go. Hold fast to it. Our great high priest. Uh, as we go on, we see over in uh, verse 15 of that same chapter. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So uh, in chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, we see, See the merciful and faithful high priest in chapter 4, verse 15. We see the sinless, sympathizing high priest. He faced the same things that we face. He lived this life in the flesh. He faced the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, just like we do. And John says in, in uh, 1 John chapter 2 that that's all that is in the world. And so when the Hebrews writer says that he was tempted in all points as we are, well, that's all that's in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And he was tempted with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Yet without sin, he can sympathize with us. He can have compassion on us. Because he knows what we face. He is our sympathizer. High priest. As we go on over to uh, chapter 5, uh, in verse 1, and then in these uh, following verses, we see that he is our divinely appointed high priest. Uh, he was made our high priest by God. Notice, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Drop down to verse 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So who made him high priest? Well, the one who said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was divinely appointed. To be our high priest. Drop down to verse 10. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, when we get over uh, into the, the study of chapter 5, <coughs> excuse me, we'll see there that one of the qualifications of the high priest is this divine appointment. And the Hebrews writer is showing that just like the, the priests under the uh, Mosaic system, the Levitical priesthood, the sons of Aaron, were divinely appointed, so was Christ divinely appointed to be our high priest. Then, when we get over to chapter 6 and verse 20, it says there that He is our eternal 
high priest. Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, the Hebrews writer talks a lot about Melchizedek in these chapters. In uh, chapter 6 and 7, he talks a lot about Melchizedek. And the point of Christ being a priest after the order of Melchizedek is that there's no end to his priesthood. And he uses the biblical record, the fact that according to the biblical record, we don't read of Melchizedek's priesthood coming to an end. Now, some, there's been all kinds of speculation made about Melchizedek. He was a pre-incarnate Christ. He was... Uh, God in the flesh, all kinds of things. He, he was eternal. But the Hebrews writer is simply pointing out that according to the biblical text, there's no end to his priesthood. Well, Christ entered into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. And so unlike the priesthood of Aaron and his sons, who we have the record of uh, priesthood uh, being appointed, and then that priest dying, and another one being appointed, that one dying, and another one being appointed. And, and the Jews, or the Hebrews, that the Hebrews writer was writing to, had all those records. And so he's basically saying, you don't have any record of Melchizedek dying and being replaced in his priesthood, and likewise, you'll never see Christ replaced in his priesthood. It's not going to happen. There's, not, there's never going to be another high priest than Jesus Christ. He is a high priest forever because he sits at the right hand of God in heaven. He will never die like these human high priests that had to be replaced when they would die. He lives forever to be our high priest. Now, we, we read of his uh, uh, mercy and faithfulness in his mediation for us as high priest. We read of his uh, uh, sympathizing and compassion on us as our high priest, as our mediator before God. And what a, a, a blessing it is. What, what a tremendous joy it is. As I'm very sure the Hebrews writer intended to convey to his audience that you never have to be concerned about another high priest coming in. That is not sympathetic. That is not faithful. That is uh, 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 not compassionate. Jesus Christ will be our high priest forever. He's entered into heaven itself. And sits at the right hand of God mediating for us. In chapter 7 and verse 26, the Hebrews writer goes on to say that he is our fitting high priest. Or uh, uh, it is... Uh, Proper for him to be our high priest. He's the right one to be our high priest. In chapter 7 and verse 26, it says there, For such an high priest became us, or is fitting us. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And so he is the right high priest for us. God sent his own son to live in this world. To suffer persecution. To, to be as Isaiah prophesies he would be. A man of sorrows and of woe. So that he could bear our sins on the cross. And take them to the grave. And so that he could come forth from the grave to ascend into heaven and to offer his own blood as our high priest before the throne of God in mediation for our sins. No one else could accomplish what he accomplished. No one else could be the sacrifice without spot or blemish. We could never offer for ourselves an adequate sacrifice for our own sins. Only He could do that. Only He could be the right one to do that. Only He could be the fitting one that would become us to do that. And He serves in His role as our high priest, having offered His own blood 
for our sins. He is our ever-effective high priest. Over in 